welcome to the studio of the WSIS Plus 20 Forum High Level Event here in Geneva. I'm delighted to say we're joined by Timothy Grosser, who's partner of International Development at EY. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Tell us, why are digital public goods important? So digital public goods are a set of capabilities in the marketplace that are available free. Um, and everyone is trying to build more capabilities uh, for, for governments, for infrastructure, to, to allow uh, us to, to, to deliver more services, deliver more impact. Um, and the, the risk with creating stuff to deliver impact is you have to then um, create it. There's risk, there's cost, there's time. With using a digital public goods, you can draw down those capabilities off, off the, the, the directory and that enables you to reuse those products free of charge. Now, what we've found is, based on our research and understanding, a lot of those products can can be only require about a 15 to 20% rework. So if you imagine it's going to cost this amount of time to build your own product, if you go to a digital public good, you're, you're saving 85% of that time. And, and especially when it's cost, time, and risk, that really adds value to it. And one of the other benefits, if I may, is, is it also creates transparency and trust. So if you're using a commonly known digital public good, such as MOSIP, which is the national ID system, a famous one in India, has uh, 1.3 billion people running on that national ID system. Um, and if you're bringing that into your country, you can straight away then have that inherent trust behind the system. And I guess the final benefit is you, you have the, the ability to remove vendor lock-in. So digital public goods, in summary, enable uh, people to remove the risk and the time and the cost to deploy products. Okay. Why then is EY playing a key role in the development of these digital public goods? So I think we are playing a development uh, a key role in this in two, in two fronts. Firstly, on the education, and secondly, on the design implementation. Um, Digital public goods is not as well known as it should be. I mean, there's around 142 at the moment. Most 121 of those are software related. The others are around uh, uh, governance models or infrastructure. So 121 of those are um, software. They are all mapped to the SDGs. So I think from, from memory, the highest one is health, which has about 72 against the uh, against um, the, the DPGs, against the health SDG. Um, but what we're doing is education and, and, and explaining the benefits of these, these products because traditionally people thought, oh, because it's free, it's poor quality. Well, that's no longer the case, right? So these are absolutely scalable, large, high quality products. And secondly, then we are also advising clients on how to implement and design these products that, that sorry, implement and design them that leverage the existing processes and reducing the amount of rework required. What ecosystems do we need to ensure that we can capitalize on digital public goods? So the, the evolution of digital public goods has been very strong over over the last years and and we've got to 142 as i said before so that's fantastic but i do think we need to further invest more um, both from a education point of view from awareness point of view and then secondly from pure technology um, to to invest more to build more products more more capabilities it's very important um, and then in addition we, we we need to strengthen the governance to enable it to get to that next level now whether that's certification um, and whether we, we optimize the governance those areas are important but I think uh, investment and and education Timothy Grosser of EY thank you so much for your time thank you very much more to come from the studio of the WSIS plus 20 forum high-level event stay tuned <laughs>